Uh, so I'm going to, so let me warn just the beginning. I'm going to be skipping a lot of uh, slides just for the brevity of the, of the presentation. So the focus of what I'm going to talk now, it's more, hmm, so it's complementary to what Antonio was telling. Tony was focusing more mostly on, on the content that I think, you know, it's time that we start thinking about it. I'm going to focus more on the continent, that is what is different tools and different approaches also to, to the focus of in, uh, introduction to micro. So, no, that's of course the ambitious, uh, uh, the ambitious topics I wanted to, to talk. So if I can cover basically the experience we, we have here, I think that's, that's enough. So what I'm going to focus the presentation is an experience that we've been using in, in Pompeu Fabra since 2008-2009. Uh, and the idea is to use experiments to teach the principles of uh, microeconomics based on the textbook of uh, Boston and Miller, hmm? Experiments with Economic Principle Microeconomics, with a triple objective. Hmm? First, we wanted to engage and motivate students. So we were, you no, know, students get bored, it's a particular introduction to, to micro. Uh, I would add here, hmm? I wanted to motivate and engage myself. Hmm? So, of course, getting bored of teaching introduction to micro. Uh, the second, I wanted to emphasize active learning. Hmm? And that's, so there are a lot of, so it's still hmm, in the infantry, all this analysis of whether uh, if we get presential online teaching, we have hmm, a statistical significance that will have an impact. The thing I found, so there is this paper in the proceedings where it shows that really active learning, and active learning means uh, it's, it's as opposed to passive classes. Active learning means the students have to find out the, the content rather than being passive and receiving in content, this, this, uh, this content. And the, the third thing is, of course, we wanted to maintain rigorousness and high standards. Okay? So we don't want to transform the classroom into a game. Or, so basically, we want to, to keep uh, the content high. So uh, let me just skip this thing. So what we did is we started mm, an experience. So, so we didn't create these experiments. We have, we have, so we created all the material I will show you now. But uh, what we did is we used this idea of using experiments as a teaching tool. Mm. So the first thing is experiments as a teaching tool is different to experiments in research. Mm. It's different in many aspects. So the first is the objective is to replicate. I don't want to find something. I want to teach something. I want to show the students that there is this uh, principle that I can not that you can you can observe in everyday life, hmm? or at least you can experiment. You can uh, you can observe in in this experiment. This doesn't mean hmm, that all the experiments will will give the outcome that you predict. And actually, you can learn a lot. Hmm? And I think the students and Myself, we learn a lot from failed experiments. Mostly, I mean, usually the reasons are very clear. Either they don't have the right incentives, they didn't, they didn't pay attention, or sometimes you want to run an experiment of a you know, perfectly competitive market, but you know, the buyers or the sellers, they talk to each other and they try to collude, and well, the, the market is not perfect, and therefore the, the outcome is not exactly what you... Uh, what the, the outcome is not exactly what you predicted, but this is, this is something you can learn uh, from the experiment. The second thing is that it's okay to ma manipulate to a certain extent hmm, what's the, the rule of the experiment or how the experiment is running. Hmm? So you don't need, I mean, if you are doing research, the researcher has to be exogenous and no manipulation. Here you have to keep in mind that it's always hmm, the idea of we want, so it's a teaching tool. We want to show the students how things work. We want to help them to understand the concepts. And thirdly, and most importantly, is you don't need to be an experimental researcher. Okay? So I'm not an experimental researcher. I've been doing experiments for teaching for a long time. Okay? So, and I think that's important because I suppose many people will think, oh, look, no, I, I've never done an experiment in my life. So how am I going to use experiments for teaching? It's not necessary at all. Okay? Uh, so let me just tell you what is our experience in Pompeu. So our experience, so this is hmm, the course that we teach first year, first quarter, so it's introduction to micro. First time we, no, we taught the course after preparing was in 2008, 2009, and I, it was Nagori and I 
who created the, the course. During the year, there have been many professors involved. We have changed many different things. And the idea to give you the list of, mm, of people, I'm probably mm, forgetting someone. Mm, don't think so, but just put the, uh, the dots there just in case, is that, well, it can be adapted. Mm, so it's not necessary. So many people, they just join the group and they've been teaching this course and then teaching something else. So it's, it's not... Mm, it, is not particular to the interest eh, of Nagori and I that we started the, the course. We were interested in doing this, uh, this innovation, and therefore this is the success. No? There have been many other people involved, and the results have been similar in, in all the cases. So we have used this for students with many different backgrounds, so people with a degree, uh, I mean, following starting a degree in economics, in business administration, in other, in international business economics, in the double degree of law and economics and law of business economics. So, and I think it could be used also for economics in many other disciplines. It would be a nice way to introduce people, for example, in political science or people in, in law, not just the double, the double degree to what it's uh, this uh, microeconomics. Uh, the other thing is we have used uh, this methodology with classes that goes, in theory, from 80 students to 240, mm? and in seminars, that is where we do the, the experiments, so the theory classes, they get divided into, into seminars, and uh, mm? we divide it between three and six groups, and we've done it mm? with the students between 25 to 60, to 60 students. In all cases, it works fine, mm? so, it's, so you, it's, it's fairly flexible to many different situations. And we have used also seminars of one hour, seminars of one hour and a half. And actually this year, so they are implementing this also in the University of, of Alicante hmm, right now this, this, uh, this semester, and they have seminars of two hours. And for what I've talked to them, it also works there. So hmm, you can adapt it to that situation. Uh, and we have, do it, we have done it in Spanish, English, and Catalan. So it's not so much that there are different languages, but basically the idea to say these languages is that all the material it's available in all three languages. Mm? So, and mm, I will emphasize that later on, but the idea is that all this material, we are more than happy to share it with anyone mm, who wants to use it. And we have done it already, right? as I said. No, Alicante started now. I was talking to people in other universities, and you know that if, uh, all the material is out there. So what's the methodology? And this is the part that I'm especially interested. So there are two types of classes. Mm? So there is the seminars and the lectures. Hmm? So seminars are the experiments, the lectures is the theory. Hmm? And the order is, is important. Okay? So there is one topic per week, hmm? and the classes goes from uh, Thursday. So this is the idea, hmm? Thursday, Friday to Wednesday, hmm? and I'll tell you why. Uh, and there are three elements in each topic. Hmm? So first is the experiment. So the students, before knowing anything, the first thing they do is they do an experiment, right? So in this experiment, before the experiment, they have to read hmm, a description. This is just a page and a half, two pages, where basically tells them what's the market they are going to find. Hmm? Is that a labor market? Is that a market where you buy and sell? Is that a market uh, where you, have, hmm, you will have pollution or so on? Hmm? But just one or two pages and a couple of uh, warming up exercises for the, for the experiment. Then we run the experiment and the students, hmm, and that's the discussion after the experiment, and this is important, running the experiment is not important per se, what is important is really to let the students think about what are the results. Hmm. Uh, so what, the idea is that the students, they have to discover and discuss the results, get the data from the experiments and work on the homework. Uh, realize that we haven't talked about theory yet. So all these students, they have to do it on their own. Hmm? Once they have struggled to find these results, hmm, and most of the, uh, a large part of the, form, of the homework is directed hmm, to help them to do this, hmm? so it's not hmm, you have to replicate what you, have, what you have seen in class. Once they have worked on that, they come to the theory class. So the important thing with the theory is that we can uh, 
generalize the results and say it's not only what happened here. No? This was a small group, this was an experiment, it was a small class. Now we actually can talk about these fundamentals and we can talk about these principles and do it in a more general setting. Hmm? We can introduce more math, we can introduce more, uh, more technique and get probably some results that hmm, you didn't think about. The other important thing is that when they come to the theory class, they already know what they don't understand because they have struggle and and they have a large, uh, have a big emphasis to have an idea what is the point where I got stuck and I cannot finish my homework because this I didn't understand. So it helps them to focus on the parts of the class that is important. And then once they, they get this, hmm, they solve all these issues hmm, in the theory, then they go to the seminar session. Uh, so they, they, they finish up the homework and they turn it in the following seminar session and we start with a new experiment. Okay, so the emphasis, and this is, this is the methodology or the part of the methodology that I, th I think it's important, hmm? and that's the title of experiential. Hmm? So the idea is, no, first they do an experiment, first they, no, they experiment on themselves, hmm? so they leave a situation that replicates what they want to learn. Second, they work on the text, they work on the homeworks, they try to think about what they have observed, then we tell them, look, we can generalize this in the theory class, and finally, they can go back and finish up hmm, and internalize all these doubts and problems they had. Hmm? And we continue with, with the experiment. So, this seems very nice. What I want, hmm, and for the rest of the, of the presentation, what I, want to, hmm, what I want to tell you is that, from the point of view of the students, hmm, the response we have uh, receive, it's very positive. Mm? Basically, I got, mm, the, uh, I got reinforced the idea that if you provide the right incentives to students, students respond. Mm? So many times this idea that we have that the students are passive, that the students, uh, you know, they are not motivated, that the students, mm, they come to class and they don't mm, happen to get engaged, well, Many times is we don't give them the tools and we don't give them the incentives in order to get engaged into the classroom. Hmm? So our experience is that if you give them the right incentives, they get they get engaged. So the last thing I have to com the last thing I have to combine to convince you is the idea that uh, we have a lot of material in order to be able to implement this class. Hmm? So the description we have, I mean, the the, the, the last thing hmm, I have in the in the presentation is to show you all the material hmm, that, we, that we have for this. So first there is this textbook. I mean, uh, hmm, ten, yeah, oh, yeah, plenty. Okay, so I can slow down a little bit. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so uh, there is, hmm, so we use this textbook basically because, no, it's there, it gives you the material, it's easy. I think hmm, I'm more interested in the methodology than really in the content and the textbook in itself, but there is this textbook, hmm, Experiments with Economic Principle, in the background you have hmm, the English version and the, and the Spanish version. The textbook comes with an instructor manual that basically explains with detail how to run all these experiments and all the material necessary to run the experiments. And then, and this is what we have done, so we have a collection of Excel files that hmm, I will show you some uh, some screenshots that give you all the necessary tools in order to run the to run these classes. What we are doing, and this is the novelty of this year, it's still in progress. What we are doing is we are until now we were doing everything with paper and pencil. What we are doing now is join with a, a, with a German university, and I don't know if you know there is this class X platform. The idea is to create a, a free software where you will, we will be able to run these experiments using smartphones in class. So we have done a couple of them this year as a trial, as an experiment this year in the, during, during the classrooms. Students, of course, love it. Uh, more importantly, it uh, speeds the process of doing the experiment. So, it's, so in a way, it's, it's easier to do the experiment. That's the reason. 
Uh, and then there is additional material we have. We have slides, we have problem sets, complementary readings, we have a list of, postca of podcasts. Hmm? That let me just eh, do a little bit of advertisement of a program of NPR that is called Planet Money, that is really good for introduction to, to, to microeconomics and, and macroeconomics. In general, where, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's, there are 20 minutes, very short, and we use many of them hmm, for the classroom, so it's, eh, so it's easy to, to get them. And, uh, and finally, the, the last part is, well, how do we do evaluation? Hmm? So this is, hmm, evaluation is the trickiest part for, for this. So we haven't really changed the standard procedure of having you know, final exam. We have a midterm. We have homework. So the only thing we have introduced is the idea that we give hmm, some incentives with experiments. Hmm? So there is small part, hmm, so if you think no, it's a 5%, hmm, Part that comes from the benefits you get from the experiments. Uh, my personal view is that this is more to show them that when you do experiments and also for the future, the idea that incentives are important than really to create incentives. Hmm? So this is first year, first quarter students. Reputation is a huge incentive. Hmm? So I don't want to be single out in the classroom as having make eh, the wrong decision and that shows in the, eh, on the blackboard. So, uh, so reputation, it's really, but, but, but it's important, hmm, I think, to use these incentives. And the tricky part is to find this balance. Hmm, and we have several formulas and so on and, and suggestions to solve this, to find this balance between incentives, fairness, hmm, which is very associated with frustration, and picaresque. Hmm. So there are many people who just try to find what's the way to get the grade without exerting effort, which is the, the, ultimate, uh, 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 the ultimate goal of, the, uh, of incentives. But of course, there is a part that it's brute luck, right? So you get a bad type, you cannot do anything. So how to solve and how to take idea that, well, even if you get a bad, hmm, a bad uh, benefit because, or low benefit because you got a bad type, hmm, this is unfair, so, it's, hmm, so there, is, there are ways to solve this, and that's something we have studied, and they are you know, correcting formulas that can easily solve this issue. Uh, I mean, I, and, and actually, this is a great, hmm, it's a great opportunity to start talking about, well, look, and that's what I tell students many times. I know it's unfair, but look, we are studying life. Life is unfair. Hmm? So, it's, so people say, oh, it's unfair, look, I have a high cost of producing. I said, fine, I mean, this, you know, many small shops, they also say, the same thing, no? Small retailers, they say, oh, look, I cannot put a very low price. Hmm? That's, that, that's, that's life. Okay, so let me just hmm, uh, give you hmm, an example of uh, basically the screenshots of how it works in, in one of these experiments. So first we start with the uh, summary of the instructions. The summary of the instructions... Hmm, it's something they have read, so we go briefly, but it's good hmm, to remind them. Some people forget to read it. Some people, hmm, they're sloppy reading it. So this is, in particular, the experiment of the labor market. So in this experiment, there are hmm, employers, they are workers, and they have to decide hmm, whether to employ. So employers, they have different costs. They have a production function. And uh, workers, they have a reservation wage. Uh, so the, what they get is they get this... Hmm, a type that tells them whether they are an employer or they are, they, are, they are a worker and what's their, their type. And then, hmm, so we give this instruction and we do three sessions. Hmm? The first one is just the standard market. We introduce a minimum wage and then uh, we introduce, so the first is a minimum wage that actually is not binding and the third one is a minimum wage that is binding. Okay, so that's, that's the idea. Hmm? No, the other way around, don't remember now. Okay? And we always end up with questions, hmm? because the important thing is they have to answer, they have to ask, and we have to answer every single question before we run the experiment. Hmm? And that's something that, uh, that it's important to emphasize. So here you have hmm? so the paper version of the, of the type that the student receive. So in this case, it's a, it's a, uh, this is a, uh, you are unemployed, so this is a worker, hmm? and it tells the worker what's the Reservation wage, in this case $12. If you go, hmm, so this is what they will get, and this is new this year, this is what they will get in their smartphone. Hmm? So they will get 
this screen that says exactly the same information, and then they have to decide whether they get hired or not, if they get employed, and what's the wage they receive. As soon as eh, this is the same, but for the, for the employer, the employer is a little bit more sophisticated because they can hire one, two, three, or four, depending on the session eh, of workers. So once the employers, hmm, the other thing is, once the employers eh, hire a worker, they introduce the information, hmm, this is in the new version, they introduce the information in the smartphone, and as soon as they submit the information, that gets projected on the screen, and everybody can see the information. Hmm? So, in the old version, they, they, what they did is, we had a registry hmm, that was the table, so they approached the table, they, end, they uh, gave the paper with the, where it was the contract, with the information, and we just impute, uh, imputed this uh, information that was projected on the, on, on the form. So, what do we get as, no, as teachers, no, as professors? So what you get is, at the beginning of the experiment, you have this, hmm, this uh, uh, tab of the, of the Excel where you introduce what's the distribution of types. Now this is automatic with the, hmm, with the online version. But, so you introduce what's the number of firms, what's the number of workers, and then once you introduce that, you get all the information that you need. You get what's going to be the prediction of the, of the experiment. You also get what's going to be the solutions of the homework. Hmm? So everything is here. Huh? So that's the different tabs that you get here. Okay? So you introduce that at the beginning of the class, and you, and you get that situation. This is screenshot where you see hmm, what, what is happening during a session. Here we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight workers have been hired. In this case, we have three workers, so it's... Hmm? It's happening during, during, during the session. Uh, this is the same for... Hmm? Uh, so this is, this is the round. And this is hmm? the other type of output that you get is you have to provide data to the students so the students can do the homework. Hmm? So that's also something that it's provided. Hmm? So this is the data that you need for the homework. That these are all the tables that the students need to, to receive in order to work before coming to the theory. And you also get what are the answers to the homework. So basically, 98%, there are two or three things that you need to fill up. Uh, personally, but 98% of the solutions to the homework, they are provided automatically at the beginning of the, as soon as you introduce the data of what's the composition of workers and uh, the composition of types for the experiment. Okay? So we have a slide, so I'm just show you, so basically, and that's why I wanted to show. So everything, perfect. So we have a slide. So everything is explained first with a step functions because hmm, it's a small market. There are few people. And then you do the jump from the step function to the continuous function. This is really useful in order to, hmm, for, uh, what I realize is that the students get a good idea of what it means a point in a curve. So, I mean, I remember when I, no, when I studied these things, a point in a curve, it was, I mean, demand, that was a line that goes down. But understanding that every point in a, in a curve, it's really a person. So, if you want to think, no, a person with a particular valuation. So, that's something that it takes time for the students to, to assimilate, as well as the concept of equilibrium. So, what it means an equilibrium, and showing that an equilibrium is the best forecast for, the, for what could happen in the market, but not everybody will buy exactly at the equilibrium. That's something that naturally comes from running the experiment. You don't have to spend time on this. So it's, so it's, it's already embedded in the experience that they have had. Okay? So, uh, I mean, this is just a little bit of publicity to say that, well, this not only, hmm, no, you don't have to believe me that it worked, eh, that, that students were satisfied with this, that the outcomes was good, but actually, no, the first, so this is just for the first years, we got very high evaluations, and this, they keep coming by high evaluations of, of the experiments. Uh, and not only, I think, and that's important, not only gives a great, a great uh, tool in order to assimilate and understand these concepts that it may appear a little bit abstract, so they appear very abstract for students when they enter hmm, economics, 
but also it's, it's a great opportunity, especially if this first year, first quarter, for the students to meet each other, right? So that's, and I think that, that's important. Hmm? So it's important that students, one of the reasons why students may want to come to class is to be with other students. Hmm? Otherwise, they would just, eh? they wouldn't need to, to be physically in the classroom. So there are many comments on evaluation. Let me just uh, highlight one of them. That's, uh, that's, no, basically, I like this, this one because it, it can make no, a, a comparative with the previous situation. So this is a guy who said, well, it was a great idea that of the experiments. I had done microeconomics uh, in an engineer before, and I can say that experiments help you to interiorize the idea uh, of what is what explained in theory. Mm? Uh, link it very well with reality. Mm? And it's a, it's a dynamic and interesting or mm, a fun way to, to understand the, the, the fundamentals of, of economics. So since I have maybe two minutes, let me just mm, do a few mm, random thoughts that are not related. Uh, so first is that I think it's time that we start thinking or rethinking about passive lectures. Mm? Uh, passive lectures, it's something uh, that many people see as being challenged by all these online resources. I know that many students, I, I've talked to them, many students, they say, oh, I was in class, I didn't understand this concept, I arrived home, I searched, and I got a YouTube video where they taught me exactly this concept, right? So there are thousands of YouTube videos, and in particular in this type, hmm, when you get into specialized topics, it might be a little bit different. But for these fundamentals, hmm, and fundamentals it goes all the way to basically the eh, first two years of, of, of economics, uh, there are all these classes that has been proved a hmm, hundred times, and, and what Antonio has presented is one of these cases where they can go there and get all the information they want in the same class. So, but I think the idea that having all these online lectures and all this material is not really a threat. It's, it's, we should see it as an opportunity. It's an opportunity to really rethink about what we want to teach, how we want to motivate the students, how we want to transmit the concepts, and how we want to motivate ourselves to really enjoy teaching. Hmm? Because if we enjoy teaching, students will enjoy teaching. Right? So I think the first problem we, we have with teaching is that... Hmm, some people, or, or I don't know how many, but uh, for personal conversation, I think many people don't enjoy teaching. Hmm? They get bored. Hmm? And if the professor, I mean, the professor gets bored, the students get bored as well. Okay? Uh, MOOCs, it's not a threat. So MOOCs is a solution for accessibility, but it's not a replacement of really what it's uh, presential classes. And there are two, uh, two concepts that I think are very important and we should start thinking about it. One is the idea of inverted classes and you know, it's something that, we, that it could be great to get more uh, analysis and more experiences hmm, because it's the only way we are going to be able to, to learn it. Two concepts that I think are, are very important. One is inverted classes that it's very similar to what we are doing here. It's the idea that the emphasis is not the theory. The theory they can get it online. Hmm. So, but, but really applying this theory, thinking about it, assimilating, sharing resources, sharing, sharing the concepts, finding out the, the problems and finding out the concepts together, uh, it's what it's enriching for the students. And the idea of program learning. That from this I've seen very little, and program learning, it's what really new technologies give us an opportunity. Program learning is how can we personalize the class to each student. And this is the problem when we have, hmm? so I teach, I have 200 students in the classroom. I cannot target every single one. Hmm? So ideally, what I would like is to have a personalized class to each student without having to meet with each student uh, personally, right? So how we go into this direction is something we should, we should think, okay? And in order to conclude, let me just uh, get a, qu a quotation that I like a lot. Uh, that says, no, tell me and I forget, show me and I may remember, involve, involve me and I understand that uh, supposedly, mm, so I was always claiming that it was Confucio, uh, recently I learned that it's not Confucio, it's a Confucian, uh, a Chinese philosopher, Chung, 
quang that come from the Chunxi, and that I've seen everywhere being uh, accredited to Benjamin Franklin, and that's false. Okay, so it's it's in the I mean it was it's in the newspapers every time that says this this quotation they talk about education they talk about this and they say oh Benjamin Franklin said this not true. Okay, so thank you. And if you have questions, you want the material, you want no me or any anyone hmm, who's involved in this project to go visit, talk to people, and talk about this project, just feel free to to contact me. Thank you very much.